Tesla is up overnight a little over a quarter of a percent, sitting at 173.27. It's been a strange week. Tesla has been up over 6%, but the overall trend year to date is Tesla still being down 30%. I really haven't opened any new position and options. Haven't been doing well at all this year. I got the 210 call that I sold that expires on April 19th and the 155 call I plan on buying at the end of 2025. Still looking to place a long call somewhere out in 2026, but I kind of want to wait until the Q1 results come out for Tesla. In the meantime, I had no problem buying TSLA stock at these levels. By 2032, you'd really have to see about two thirds of uh, cars and light trucks having a plug. That's so, incredible. Is yeah, that possible? Huge leap. Uh, you know, uh, in my personal opinion, I believe we'll be well beyond two thirds by 2030, let alone 2032. Adoption is increasing still, yeah. despite some gloomy headlines out of the fourth quarter last year. You know, more of these cars are being sold even than conventional cars right now. The, the increase, rather, in sales is, is higher than the increase for conventional cars. Yeah. There's a lot of enthusiasm from some quarters for EVs that are going to get cheaper as battery prices okay. come down. Okay. Ding, 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 ding! Tell her what she's won, Johnny! Your mother f***ing right. Predictably, battery costs are going to come down. Either that's going to improve profit margins, well, considering Tesla is one of the few companies actually making money off battery electric vehicles, any improvement to the margin story would be greatly appreciated. But in the rare case of Tesla, they're able to pass on those savings to consumers. How does Dan I say it? It's Tesla's world and everybody else is paying rent. So, so there's a lot of enthusiasm in some quarters. Of course, there's a lot of people who are concerned about these rules and say they're well, a de facto would even unlock a lot, right? That's the first yeah. thing you hear. Maybe after a range, to your point, people have concerns about the charging network. But it's the cost that keeps, it's a high barrier to entry. So obviously the administration is trying to do that. I'm fascinated by the reaction of, uh, by automakers. Clearly this is not the type of thing they want to hear. But they were applauding the addition of hybrids which seems like a very important part of this story. We've actually seen hybrids outselling EVs recently in terms of what people are comfortable buying. There is a place for the stepping stone for the next few years, I believe. And hopefully our legacy auto manufacturers here in the US can profit a little bit from that. But trust that the hybrid is indeed a stepping stone. That's nothing to hang your hat on. If you want to survive the decade, you need to make sure that you're making battery electric vehicles in mass quantity and efficiently enough to where you're making some profit. Right, uh, plug-in hybrids in particular have taken, you know, a, a grown in interest and, mm -hmm. and that is, even though it's a more expensive uh, setup, you've got two drivetrains instead of just a battery electric right. uh, uh, approach. When she says more expensive, it has two drivetrains in it, so at the purchase price, it's going to be a tad bit more expensive than you'd expect. But think about the maintenance that's included on having two drivetrains. One of the main reasons why we switched over to nothing but battery electric vehicles is because the maintenance is significantly less. Maintaining an internal combustion engine is costly. You know, there's they're clearly uh, positive for consumers who are worried about range, who are worried about finding that next charging station. Uh, and, and so obviously Detroit and the automakers really wanted this flexibility and they got it. They yeah. got a final rule that was easier th Amazing. to comply with than yeah. the final than the initial proposals. We're talking about them changing their lineups, essentially. Right. This is if, if you're going to essentially force consumers to buy EVs, you need to stop selling cars with gas engines. Right, if you're, you can have gas models uh, clearly under this rule, but Just you're gonna have fewer. to offset, exactly. And, and you know, the concern uh, that, that opponents raise is uh, that means those cars are gonna be more expensive, they're gonna be harder to find, mm -hmm. uh, and in some areas of the country, they may be what you really need, uh, it, certainly over the next few years. Coupled with enhancements, maybe from the infrastructure law to extend and make the charging network more continuous? Right. We are uh, benefiting from, and, and this industry will benefit from, tremendous uh, money that's coming out of both the infrastructure law and the Inflation Reduction Act okay. uh, that's going into chargers. Obviously, that's also supporting some battery manufacturing in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, all of that's supposed to help basically bring this infrastructure along. Because you can't have one without the other, I guess, here. But uh, I, I, you look, you know how politics works. If, if Donald Trump 
came back to the White House, this all gets wiped away. Uh, As an executive action, right? Indeed. I mean, this is an EPA rulemaking. They Uh would have to go through the process of undoing it, which is something he did last time. Sure. Uh, And so it might take a few years. uh, And but but the fact that automakers are buying into this revised schedule will help. And and that's important, though. A few years. That means they're going to be altering. They're going to be retooling their factories already by then, which might be incentive to keep it in place. You know, they, pr- they, they prefer some certainty, mm-hmm. and I think that's an argument that you would hear them make if, if Trump is elected and wants to disband this. Now, to be clear, you know, uh, uh, a President Trump might not care too much about what the automakers want. Uh, right. He may also, uh, you know, be looking to consumer support and, and what consumers and voters want. Look, no matter who's in the White House, this transition is going to happen. It shouldn't matter what the policy is for the EPA, All of our U.S. legacy auto manufacturers should be pushing toward battery electric vehicles. Most of the government funds coming from the IRA and this infrastructure bill is going to Tesla. And as a Tesla investor, while I don't mind that, I also realize that it is kind of unnecessary. The spirit of these incentives is to offer other companies not named Tesla a leg up in trying to survive the decade. Offset some of their costs because this transition is not going to be easy. And the pitch that the president is making is, look, these, this is the future of the industry. The future of cars is electric. Yep. Do we in the US wanna make those cars or do right. we wanna let China compete against us to take our market share? Mm-hmm. And so that's the compelling argument that the president is trying to advance mm-hmm. and went over Detroit with. It's crazy how Tesla stock is below 200 right now. Tesla is going to be a multi the trillion dollar company here in the next decade. Currently with a market cap just over half a trillion. And I haven't heard one peep from the financial news media about full self-driving version 12 from Tesla. How is this software flying under the radar of the news media? This is insane to me. As a matter of fact, this, this is over. Uh, that this video, I'm cut. It's done. Normally, I would say that's all you get from me today, but no, you're gonna get some bonus content.